chapter 6 today. And actually, this is interesting, we're just going to look at one verse today. And I'll bet you most, if not all of us, could recite this verse from memory. It goes like this. Give us... Very good. <laughs> Seven words. Give us this day our daily bread. But listen to me. I think God can use those seven words this morning, if you'll let him, to revolutionize your prayer life, to revolutionize your relationship with him through Jesus, if you let him this morning. There is a lot in these seven words. We've been going through the series on prayer, which has been incredible. We're working through what we call the Lord's Prayer. We're just going to bite off this one verse this morning. But i got to tell you, in preparation this week for teaching this message, I had quite a week. Isn't that always the case? <laughs> uh, Monday, which is my day off, <clears throat> late morning, I get a text from my mom. Rob, don't panic, but I'm having these symptoms. And she starts to tell me what they were. And it turns out she'd had these symptoms like a week and a half ago. She says, I know you're going to an appointment, but after your appointment, if you don't mind, why don't you come and take me to the ER? <laughs> of course, I get in my car, I zoom over to my mom's house, I grab her, take her to the ER. Long story short, they have to admit her to the hospital. She's having some significant um, symptoms. Long story short, she has a couple of stents put in her heart. Long story short, she's at home doing great now. You know, it's really a miracle. What, I know. Well, thank God for that. Okay. Needless to say, I spent a lot of time this week praying for my mom, right? Praying for her physical health, right? But even more than that, as far as I know and can see, my mom hasn't put her faith in Jesus yet. She hasn't surrendered her life to him yet. And so this week, more than ever, I was praying for her salvation, I've been praying for that for like 36 years now, right? And, I mean, we can thank God and we praise God that he answered my prayer and my mom's doing well. She's at home, probably feeling better than she has in a long time, right? But she still hasn't put her faith in Christ yet. I'm still waiting on that answer. Have you ever prayed a prayer to God and really just clearly seen him answer it? And you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, God heard and answered this prayer? Have you ever prayed a prayer and God hasn't answered it? Maybe you're still waiting for him to answer it. This is like my prayer for my mom, 36 years now. You know, hello. Right? <laughs> Do you ever wonder if, if God even hears your prayers? Sometimes it can feel like he doesn't, Right? Well, this morning, we're going to, I'm going to try to address and wrestle through Scripture with you with some really relevant, messy questions about prayer. Questions like, is it, is it even okay to ask God for things? And, and how do we know whether or not He's really going to answer us? Are there things that we can do or not do that might make Him more likely to answer Are there some things that we shouldn't ask him? And why does he seem to answer some prayers and he doesn't answer other prayers? Let me just say, if these questions or questions like this have come across your heart and your mind this morning, that I want to encourage you to listen today. God has something to say to you through his word to give you some answers. That's what we're studying this morning. Our, our subject is God's provision. And our objective is that we would ask our Father every day for everything. That we would learn to go to our Heavenly Father and ask Him every day for everything. And before we jump into it, as always, I want to pray right now and ask Him to help. This would be a good message, right? Would you pray with me? So we turn to you this morning, Heavenly Father. As we're studying prayer, we start off by praying to you and asking you to speak to us today. We know you're not hiding from us. We believe that you love us and you want what's best for us and you want to 
change us and reveal yourself to us and make us more like you. So would you please help us today, Lord? Humble our hearts, give us ears to hear, the faith to believe. We just lift this up to you in Jesus' name, to his glory, amen. Now just a little context, remember, we're studying this prayer which is in the Gospel of Matthew. It was written by Matthew. The Holy Spirit inspired Matthew to write down the things that Jesus said and did. And this is an interesting incident because this is when the disciples, some of the guys that had been hanging around Jesus who were closest to him, had asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And so this is part of Jesus' response. And you realize Jesus, God the Son, the Son of God, is now going to answer the question, how then should we pray? So considering the source, it's worth studying and paying attention to. There's something in here for us this morning. And so, the first verse, the only verse we're going to look at today, Matthew 6, 11, let's say it together. Give us this day our daily bread. We've said it, we know it, we've prayed it many times. Let's break it down. The first thing we want to do is just bite off the two first words, give us, give us. And right away, let's ask the question that I threw out. Is it okay to ask God for things? Is it okay? Well, we see right here, Jesus is telling us, he's encouraging us to go to our Heavenly Father and ask him, give us, give us. The fact of the matter is, God is a generous Father who delights in giving good things to his children. Let me say that again, because that was kind of a, a revolutionary thought to me. God, our Heavenly Father, delights, delights in giving good things to his children. Years ago, we lived in Moore Park. My wife and I, we have two, our kids were young then. They still lived with us. They don't anymore. <laughs> anyway, and it was at a time when, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. We kind of lived paycheck to paycheck, but we were fine. God was blessing us. But one of my grandmothers on my mom's side, my grandma on my mom's side passed, passed away, and she left us some money. It wasn't a huge chunk of money, but for us at that time, it was a significant chunk of money. And so we're like, what are we going to do with this? Should we give it away? Should we invest it? Should we save it for college? Should we buy something? Should we go some, you know. Long story short, we did a couple of things with it, but one of the things we did is we took a chunk of this money, and this was a significant chunk for us, and we purchased a swing set for my kids. And this was kind of one of those elaborate swings that had a slide, a couple of swings, this platform you could climb up and hang. You know, it was one of these big things, right? So it took some time to put together, especially for somebody like me. I can do it. It's not really my favorite thing, but I can do it. So I spent days. We spent this money, and I spent all this time and energy putting this swing set together. But let me just tell you something. When my kids climbed up, and they used that swing and that slide and climbed on that thing. And I saw how happy they were. It brought joy to my heart. You know what I'm talking about, right? Even though it was expensive and a sacrifice, I delighted to do something that brought my children happiness. Listen, if we as human parents want to do this for our kids, how much more does our perfect, loving, heavenly Father want to bless us how much more does it delight his heart to bless his children? Have you ever thought about that? He delights to do that. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, one chapter over. Jesus said, if you then, being evil, and he was just saying, you as sinners, you're imperfect human people, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? We're made in God's image. We're a reflection of who he is. And a part of that is we love to bless our kids. We delight in blessing them. And it's the same on a much larger, more complete scale for him. So then it made me ask the question, and I want you to ask yourself this question. Why, why don't we ask more? Why don't we ask more often? Why are we sometimes reluctant to ask God for things? I came up with a couple answers. You want to hear them? Okay, good, because you're going to anyway. <laughs> One is, maybe we don't even believe he's there. 
Another might be, well, okay, he's there, but he's really not involved. He really doesn't care what's happening in my life. Maybe we think that he's not going to answer. I don't know if you're like me, you know, there, I feel like I've had prayers that he hasn't answered before, so how do I know if he's going to answer this one? You know? Maybe we think that uh, we shouldn't ask him for this particular thing. There's some things that are okay to ask God for and some things that we shouldn't. Or maybe we don't even think about asking him. We want something, we say, oh, I can make that happen. I can get that done. I can obtain that myself. We're very self-sufficient people, right? What is it for you? What is it for you that keeps you from asking God for things? It's important for us to realize. Our Heavenly Father wants us. He wants us to come to Him, just as we want our children to to come to us. He wants you to go to him with your requests. But that's not all. Jesus said, pray, give us this day. This day. Literally means this very day he's talking about. Now think about this with me. If Jesus says when you pray, you're supposed to pray and ask for your needs this day, then when this day's over and a new day starts, you gotta ask again, right? Which means we need to come to him and ask him every day. Every day, really every moment of every day. God wants us to come to him. He wants us to live one day at a time trusting in him. But if you're like me, living one day at a time can be hard. Letting go of worrying about the future, letting go of making plans and and having angst and obsessing about what's going to happen in the future, that's hard for me to do. I know I'm not alone. But that's what God wants us to do. He says, I don't want you to worry about tomorrow. I want you to come to me every day and let me deal with it. Jesus says it very clearly in verse 34 of this chapter. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In other words, it's going to be enough to deal with today. I don't want you to worry about tomorrow. Have you, ever, have you ever done this? Have you ever had something out there that you were either afraid was going to happen or that you really, really wanted to happen and you kind of get obsessed about it and you're thinking about it, it's causing you anxiety, you kind of feel that uneasiness in your stomach and it, it tends to dominate your thoughts and you're talking to people all about it all the time and it's kind of hard to sleep because you're worried about this thing in the future and then it doesn't happen. This thing you've been worrying about never even occurs. And you realize, God, I just wasted so much of my life stressing over Have you ever done that? The fact of the matter is, is all the worry in the world doesn't change one thing. And we know this. And God knows it. And he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Come to me today. Jesus used the phrase, abide in me. Stay in me all the time. Walk with me. Talk with me. Pray to me. Ask me. Don't worry about tomorrow. Easier said than done, but not impossible with God. So I ask you today, is there something that you're obsessing about, that you're worrying about right now in your future? Give it to God. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's something about finances or your job. Maybe it's something about a relationship, your marriage, a child. Don't worry about it. Just take it to the Lord. Give it to Him today. And then tomorrow when you wake up, bring it to Him again. One day at a time, every day. That's what he wants for us. And then there's another danger that we have as human beings. We tend to get kind of self-confident and self-sufficient about the future. We think, you know what, I'm doing, I got a good job, I'm making good money, I'm saving money, I got my retirement account, I'm, I'm paying ahead on my house, got a car, that car payment's gonna be paid off soon, kids are out of college, I'm gonna be good to go. 
especially in our culture, because we have so much, it's easy for us to get really self-sufficient and to start to put our confidence, to find our peace of mind in ourselves, our possessions, our money, our position. Listen to what God says through James, James 4, 13 to 15. He says, I love James, because he's always like, bam. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. What God is saying is, I don't want you to worry about tomorrow, but I don't want you to think you got it all together for tomorrow either and get all cocky and self-sufficient so that you don't come to me. I want you to come to me every day. Find your peace of mind, your security, your comfort, your confidence in me every day, one day at a time. That's how our Heavenly Father wants us to live. Now, some may ask, does this mean we shouldn't make any plans at all then? Well, no. Whenever we look at something, we have to look at what the whole Scripture says, and there are lots of verses in the Bible that talk about the wisdom of planning for the future, not being lazy and being unprepared, right? But the difference is, we make our plans including God in them. We ask God to give us wisdom to direct our steps, and we pray, as James said, Lord, we're going to make these plans, and it looks like it's this way, at, this way, but at the end of the day, I know your will is going to be done. But the good news is, his will is what's best, because he loves us. He wants what's best for you. So we make plans, but we don't make presumptuous plans. We submit our plans to our Heavenly Father, who does hold the future, who does know the future, who can impact the future when we can't, and we trust Him. Again, I think about this. Have you ever done something like this where you've, you've made plans to go somewhere or do something or be something, and you've sacrificed a lot of time, energy, and money, and then you end up going a whole different way. This happened to me. Years ago, I used to think I was going to be a, a, a licensed marriage and family therapist. And that's kind of a long road. You've got to go to a lot of schooling, which I did. You're supposed to get 3,000 hours, which I did about a third of them. And I'm working, you know, I'm working a full-time job to provide for my family, going to school at night and working part-time counseling. It was a long haul. And then like a third of the way through the hours, long story short, God just uh, took me a whole different way and brought me into vocational ministry. Now, thankfully, there's a lot of overlap. <laughs> but I look back and just go, man, feels like I wasted some life there. Have you ever done that? That's why it's so important that we, we seek God as we're making plans for the future. And this is why he wants us to abide in him every day, one day at a time, and bring everything to him. Are you relying on the Lord for your future? I get an amen. <laughs> he sounds a little young to be planning his future, but okay. <laughs> and one other thing I want to just mention about this every day. As I've mentioned before, I had two kids. They're both grown, married, and out of the house now. There can be days that go by, sometimes even up to a week, where I realize I don't interact with my kids at all because I'm busy, they're busy, whatever. My son and his daughter, they live like three blocks from us. But when they call or text, life stops. Wait a minute, Deanna, I heard from Travis. What, do they want to get together? You know, the point is we love to hear from our children. It would be kind of cool if we heard from them every day. Right? So again, thinking in terms of us and our relationship with our Heavenly Father, I think he might be blessed if we came to him every day, all the time, every day. You know what I'm saying? I think he'd be blessed by that, just as we are as heavenly parents, as, as earthly parents. 
So our Father wants us to ask him, and he wants us to ask him every day, every day. But that's not all. Wait, there's more. What's that last phrase? Give us this day our daily bread, right? Our daily bread. And what we can get from this last verse, this last phrase, is that our Father wants us to ask him every day for everything, for everything. The laborers, the average laborers back in Jesus' time worked one day for one day's amount of food, basically. They lived literally day to day. Remember the Israelites when they were out wandering in the desert? God gave them manna in the desert to provide for them one day at a time, right? But God wants us to come to him for everything. So this raises a couple of questions I want to wrestle with. Because if you just take this literally, our daily bread, that sounds kind of Spartan, doesn't it? God, just give, me, just give me enough food to keep me alive today, you know? And maybe if, if it's okay, let me have something on my body to wear so I can be warm and not get arrested. And then if, if you don't mind, if I could just maybe spend the night in your house to have a roof over my head in case it rains. Of course, it never does here in California. Doesn't that sound like a kind of a stingy relationship? If we just ask God just for our basic needs. So then, okay, well, are there things, can we ask God for anything? Are there things that we shouldn't ask him for? Can we ask God for our wants? And how can we distinguish between our needs and our wants then? These are some good questions, aren't they? Well, let's just talk again about parent-child relationships. Most of us here have raised children. Kids, when they're little, they ask for everything, don't they? Some of you laugh at me. Mom, can I get that? Mom, Dad, can you get me that? Mom, can I get that? And most of the time, you're like, no, no, no. Actually, yes, you can have that. No, 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 no. But they're asking for things all the time. That's what little kids do, right? Why can't we do that with our Heavenly Father? When our kids ask for these things, it's not up to them whether or not they get them. It's up to us. We're the parents. We know what's best. We love them. We understand the big picture. So we're going to decide. It's the same with our Heavenly Father. We can come to Him and ask Him for things. And it's not up to us to figure out if it's the right thing or not. We can trust Him. Now, having said that, we have to say God has given us His Word. He's revealed in the Bible very clearly some things that are inappropriate and some things that are appropriate. You know, if my little fourth grade child came and said, Daddy, can you score me some illegal drugs today? My answer is going to be no. But he probably wouldn't even ask that. And he didn't, by the way, he didn't. I'm just making this up. But the point is that we shouldn't come to our Heavenly Father understanding who he is, asking him for things that we know are clearly against his word. God, could you please bring me somebody to have an affair with? You know, that's going to be a no. But besides that... Why can't we come to God and ask him for everything and then just trust that he's going to discern what's best for us? Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. It's an open invitation to come to him and ask him, not just for our basic needs to survive, but for everything whether it's about something in a relationship. I know young people praying, God, bring me a spouse. Well, is that a need? They may think it is. You can actually live without a spouse. I can't. I couldn't live without my wife, but most people could. It's okay. If it's about money, uh, uh, maybe a raise or a promotion at your job, something about your health. You've got this health issue, but you're still alive, so you shouldn't pray and ask God to heal. No, ask him. Direction in life? Your Father, our Father, wants us to go and ask Him for everything. But, but what if I ask for something wrong? What if I ask for something sinful? God can handle it, okay? He will decide, just as we decide for our children, he is not going to give us anything that's bad for us, inappropriate, wrong, or sinful. We can trust 
Our Heavenly Father, He loves us enough, He's only going to give us what is absolutely best. Not even good, not better, best for us. Now, sometimes that's hard for us to see because we think we know what's best. But we have to look at what the Scripture says, who God is. Perfectly all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving, and we trust in that. Let's, let's talk about an example from the Bible. Who is our ultimate example in everything? Jesus Christ, right? Okay, dig this. Jesus asked God for something that wasn't a need. The night before he was crucified, he's praying in the garden. Jesus knows what's going to happen. He knew what was supposed to happen before the foundation of the earth. He understood the plan. He was supposed to go to the cross, to die on the cross for our sins. But what did he pray the night before? God, if there's any way, take this cup away from me. In other words, if there's any way, I don't want to do this. Let's find another way to do this. What needed to happen was he needed to go to the cross, but he asked his father, if he could avoid it. Hey, when Jesus asks for things that are not just wants, then it's okay for us too. But, some of you are like, whoa, 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 whoa. But, what did he pray at the end of his request? Not my will, but your will be done. And that is the catch. That's the caveat for every prayer we should always pray. We can come ask our loving Heavenly Father for anything, but we always have to include, but God, not my will, yours be done. I believe in you. I know who you are. I know you love me. I know you want what's best for me. So even though this seems pretty clear to me, even though I really want it. You ever get that from your little kids? Oh, Dad, I really want it. Oh, it's a firework. You're four years old, you know? Even though I really want it, I trust you. Even if I never get it, I'm going to trust you. You know and want what's best for me. So not my will, but your will. Sometimes I pray prayers and I literally will say that, God, I don't trust myself. I, this is what it looks like to me. This is what I think would be good to happen. But I don't trust myself. I believe what Jeremiah said. Our hearts are really deceitful. I'm thick-headed. I don't have all knowledge. So here's my request, but don't do it for me. I want, I want your will to be done. Have you ever prayed prayers like that before? They're good to pray. That's what Jesus did. Not my will but yours be done. So we can ask him about everything with that caveat. Right. So here's another question. Okay. So if my heavenly father wants me to ask him every day for everything, why doesn't he answer all my prayers? The answer to that question is he does. Think about it. This is, this is weird, but he answers every one of your prayers. You just might not get it. Sometimes the answer is no. Did you ever say no to your kids? Sometimes the answer is not yet. Wait. That's the one I have a hard time with. A lot of times I'm praying, I really want something right now. And sometimes the answer is yes, but here's what it's going to look like. You're asking for this. You think it's going to be this. It's actually going to be this because this is better. So reality is, you guys, God answers all of our prayers. It's just sometimes we don't like the answer. We've got to understand when we ask God for things that he is the creator, God of the universe perfectly righteous, perfectly just, perfectly holy, perfectly loving, who knows exactly what you need and I need. And he cannot, because of who he is, he cannot give us anything less than the absolute best. He can't do it. 
really, we should be thankful for that. If we got everything we asked for, we'd really be messed up. It's true. And what happens is, as we walk with God, as we abide in Him, as we come to Him day after day after day and pray and experience His answers, we get to know Him more. We become, we're in a process of becoming more like Jesus. And it's a lifelong process. But as that happens, after a while, our prayers will start to get more and more in line with His will. And we'll start to see yeses to a lot more of our prayers because we're praying more in accordance with His good and perfect will. We're never going to be perfect at that in this lifetime. But that's what will happen after a while. We'll realize there's some things that we shouldn't be asking Him for according to His word. And we'll also realize that, you know, at the end of the day, God, I want your will, not mine, because I know that's best, because I know you now. And don't beat yourself up if you're not there yet. We're all in process. You know, we all fall short. We all mess up. That's okay. We can't wear God out. Our kids would wear us out sometimes. I just don't want to hear it anymore. Honey, can you take them? You know, we can never wear God out. He's God. So our Heavenly Father, who loves us, wants us to ask Him every day for everything. That's the, that's the thought I want you to leave with today. When you wake up in the middle of the night, hopefully you won't, but if you do, and you're thinking, what was that message about? God wants you to ask Him every day for everything. Like I said, I don't believe right now that my mom has put her faith in Jesus as her Savior yet. I've been praying for 36 years now about that. But I'm going to keep praying and asking every day for him to save her. But i got to tell you, sometimes after 36 years, and I'm not the most patient, patient person, sometimes I wonder, why is it taking so long, God? But I had a revelation and maybe this will bless you. If you have a prayer that you're praying day after day after week after month after year and it hasn't been answered yet, at least right now the answer is no. Here's the encouragement. I realize that this is the biggest burden I carry in my life is for my mom's salvation. It's a burden. It's the place I can go to and feel sad real fast. But I realize it's keeping me on my knees. It's keeping me coming back to him all the time, leaning on him, relying upon him, asking him, and that's good. It's keeping me connected to him. And it's the same with you, with whatever prayer you're praying, that burden that you're carrying, that sadness that you have, just keep going to God about it. He's using it to draw you to him. That's why Paul, you know, he had this thorn in the flesh and we, nobody knows what it was exactly, but he said he prayed and prayed and prayed, asked God to take it away, and God said, no, I want my grace to be sufficient for you. I want you to keep leaning on me. I want you to keep needing me. I want you to keep trusting me and turning to me. I want to be in relationship with you. So that's the blessing of the burden. What do you need from your Heavenly Father this morning? What do you want from your Heavenly Father this morning? Are you asking Him? Have you asked Him once or twice and you've stopped asking? Keep asking. Keep asking Him. Ask Him today. When you wake up, ask Him again tomorrow. Keep asking him. It's okay. He wants you to come to him. You're not bugging him. He loves hearing from you. Keep asking him. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, will he not with him freely give us all things? Romans 8, 32. God gave us Jesus on the cross Keep asking him, knowing he will answer in his time 
in his way, giving you what's absolutely best for you. That's how Jesus taught us to pray. Let's go do it. Let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Lord, I want to pray for anyone here this morning who has not asked for your salvation, who has not asked you, Lord Jesus, to be their Savior. You can do that today. Let go of control. Let go of trying to be good enough yourself. And just put your faith in Jesus Christ who gave his life on the cross for you. Surrender your life to him. And then all of this that we've been talking about will be your story now. And God, for those of us who know you, help us to grow in our faith. Help us to grow in this area of prayer. Remind us through your spirit to constantly, every moment of every day, be praying and talking to you and asking you and surrendering to you, just abiding in you about everything all the time. Draw us to yourself. Help us to know you more. Help us to love you more. We thank you for this wonderful gift that we call prayer and just the the privilege and the opportunity it is to have a relationship with the God of the universe, a heavenly Father who loves us. And we thank you, Jesus, for making that all possible, your death on the cross and your resurrection. It's to your glory we pray. Amen. Thank you.